I've taken down my cabinets and uh, unscrewed the light fixtures. Got everything kind of hanging here. And I'm about to take this off. This sheet metal on the ceiling is about to come off. Or at least mostly. If you want to see an example of how to do this correctly, you should look at some of old, uh, you should look at some of Steampunk Steve's old videos. Because uh, that's a really good example of what I should have done, which is to gut the inside. And I didn't do it for the walls, I should have. I just walled over it. This will reduce the weight by quite a bit. But especially up here in the ceiling, it's got... Uh, see, it's got this insulation up here. But what happens is I notice that moisture gets up there and uh, condenses and eventually it's probably going to cause a problem. The foam doesn't do that. The foam is better. So I'm going to pull this out and I'll probably put this, I'll do something with this fiberglass. I'm thinking I might put it under the floor, outside under the floor. You can see I undid all these. These were machine screws. And uh, when I first got the bus, I tried to take these out, but I kept stripping them out. And I was just using a drill, but now I have an impact driver. And that, uh, that seems to do the trick. Yeah, see? Look at all that moisture up there that was inside the ceiling so that's one issue it is claimed that the spray foam won't do that and as far as I can tell that's correct but um, this fiberglass certainly does do this seems like any hole especially with this propane heater that I have uh, that lets out moisture you have wood heat it's less likely you're electric but uh, certainly any moisture in the bus goes straight up there. And because this is cold, it condenses up here on the ceiling. It's coming. It's a hassle that I put all this lighting up here first. So this is such as life, isn't it? So here it is without the uh, sheet metal on there. Um, I think it's fair to say that most people, at least the ones I've seen, would just leave the frame at this. And... Uh, Put the ceiling on on top of this but uh, I am not like most people and I'm not that tall so I'm gonna put um, some metal furring strips on there which will give me about an extra inch of foam insulation and uh, also the ability to run my wires for the lighting this is the furring strips that I'm gonna use they're like this it's called hat channel and at least where I live, these are pretty hard to find. I did find a lumber store that had them, but it's the only place in town. And what I do is I slit these every four inches or so. And then I'm able to bend them to the contour of the ceiling. And screw them in here with my sheet metal screws. And uh, that'll give me room to run the wires for the lighting. And also a little bit extra insulation. What a mess, huh? I couldn't do this if I was still married. See what I'm doing here is uh, I'm going to be putting ceiling tile up here. And so I'm a little more anal about this than I normally would because with the ceiling tile, if uh, one of the light fixtures is out a little bit differently from the wall, you're really going to see it on the that particular tile pattern. will be a little bit different on each one. So this, uh, not only does it uh, give me a template for cutting the plywood, it also allows me to ensure that all of the light fixtures are spaced the same. And this one was actually not a little bit, but it is now. So here it is all framed in. I've got my light fixtures all wired in.
and uh, I've masked everything off. I'm about ready to do the foam and the plywood. Now see what I did here is I put these fire sprinklers in here. These are pretty cheap. I forget how much they were. $10, $12, something like that each. I have one here. And I have another one here. The wood heater will go here. And the range is across here. And then there's another one here in the bedroom. So, as long as I have water pressure, uh, they will kick in. The way these things work is kind of cool. There's this liquid inside here. And I think it's 140 degrees. If this thing gets to 140 degrees, that'll burst and that'll release the valve in there. Here's something handy for doing this. This is a cargo bar. You can see this uh, piece of plywood is not even, it's not screwed in or anything. It's just being held up by that. Talk about a third hand. This is a cargo bar. And I forget whether I got this probably either at Home Depot or Harbor Freight. And honestly, I don't remember which. Probably one of those two. And uh, it could be a little bit longer. This one, I don't know, I think it's a little under six feet, something like that. You can see it's fine for this, but I'm not sure it would work if I had it straight on the floor. I have it on the seat. But it works really well. I have two of these. They really come in handy for holding something in place. If you're up in the woods all by yourself trying to convert a bus. So here's how I'm doing this. Putting this in sections. This rigid foam. And this stuff goes up underneath there. The poor man's spray foam. This, this stuff is a lot, a lot cheaper than this spray. So I'm having this problem with some of these. See where it's bowing out because the foam expanded. And this is irritating, but it's not really the end of the world. Um, it's just if I had to do this again, I'm not sure what I would do. Brace these better. I don't know. But just be aware of that if you're doing it. I Notice I didn't have any cross uh, screw surface going along here. That probably would have helped. Um, you know, the best way to do it is to spray foam it, is to strip everything out and spray foam it, like I said originally and again. Um, a good example of that is Steampunk Steve, back when he was doing his bus. That's, that's about the best example I've ever seen. Um, you got to do it yourself, spray kit. Anyway, so it's, it's not the end of the world. I just unscrew these, and I can take my tool here. I take my multi-tool. It's just like cutting hair, you know. It just shaves it right off. You just shave off the excess and screw the panel back. And uh, then what I'm doing is uh, putting a, what I should have done in the first place, putting a strip of plywood along like that and screwing it on both sides. And then that helps shore it up. And just like here. So here it is, ready to tile. Well, I think that's it for this time. Catch you guys next time. Have a good one. Later.